Thank you, Inner Choir, for your precious choral anthem. May we all enter New Jerusalem and give glory to God. It's very, I stand here with a nervous heart. I've been at the main front gate and coming up here, it's very frightening and makes me very nervous. And through this precious on-site worship and precious pastors must stand here, but I thank Father God for allowing me to stand here at this pulpit. And I thank you also the saints. Today through Ezekiel 40, through 6 through 7 and 47 verse 1, I would like to share the message, the threshold and doorpost of Ezekiel's temple. There is something that is very important in Ezekiel's temple, and that is how can we enter Ezekiel's temple? That is because Ezekiel's temple is a blueprint of the New Jerusalem. And the precious Coranthum saying of New Jerusalem, and I sincerely thank you. So the believers, it, the goal and hope for the believers is to go into the New Jerusalem. In order to go into New Jerusalem, we must go past the threshold. There is a door and it's the entrance of anything. And in a day, we go through doors many times. And when we look at the doors that were used in ancient Israel, first, before the Passover, they were to put blood on the doorpost. And this is in Exodus 12, verse 7. And the ancient doorpost, there was the top, and there were sides, and that was the doorpost. And the bottom part is the threshold. And there is the word threshold of the gate. And in the Ezekiel's temple, there, the expression threshold of the gate appears a lot. And in Hebrew, it's the top of the door. And in Hebrew, this is Mashikov. And this is in Exodus 12, verse 7. And second, the right and the left, there is the doorpost. And in Hebrew, it's Mejuza. And this is also in Exodus 12, verse 7. And third, the threshold of the gate is the same thing as the threshold of the door. And this is Sa'af in Hebrew, and it refers to the entire door. The word threshold appears in Ezekiel's temple, and it's Petah in Hebrew, which means a hole. The door, the threshold of the door means the entire door. And fourth, the threshold is the same in Hebrew as Mifutan. And they are both the same threshold and it contains the same meaning. So we took a look at it briefly. And what is the lesson that this door or this gate gives us today? First, the door represents everything inside a building. When we go inside a big building, we can see big doors or big entrances, and we see how grand it is, and sometimes we stand in awe, and we sometimes wonder if we can go in or not. And there is a gate to the house, and that's the representative of the house, and that's the representative door. In the past, there was a city gate, 
and the gate also represented the entire city. In Genesis 24, verse 60, it says, They blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of ten thousands, and may your descendants possess the gate of those who hate them. It says, May your descendants possess the gate of those who hate them, and it means to get the entire city of those who hate them. Why does it say possess? It's because the gate represents the entire city. That's why before the Passover, God commanded them to put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and the door, and everybody inside the house would receive redemption. As long as you don't come outside of the house, you receive redemption, salvation. That means the doorpost and the door represents each of the people inside the house. In Exodus 12, verses 22 and 23, and it said they, will, they must not go out until the morning. And then the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your house to smite you when he sees the blood. Each of the people inside the door, there was no need for each of them to put on the blood. As long as they had blood on the door, then everyone inside the house was protected. When the people left Exodus, they got a lamb and were to put the blood on the door. And after they settled in Canaan, God's command changed. When the Israelites settled in Canaan, God said, Do not keep the Passover in your houses, but come to the temple, the sanctuary. In Deuteronomy 16, verses 5 and 7, it says, Do not keep the Passover in your towns, but at the place where the Lord your God chose to establish His name. And you shall keep the Passover in the evening at sunset. In verse 7, it says, You shall cook and eat it in the place which the Lord your God chooses. In the morning you are to return to your tents. The place where the Lord your God chose here is the temple, the tabernacle. And they were to keep the Passover at the tabernacle. They were not slaves of Egypt no more, but they were a nation. And they were to go to the temple and get the lamb and kill the lamb and sp sprinkle the blood there and eat over there. If they sp sprinkled the blood in that one place, then the entire nation received protection of the blood. So what must each family do? Then what must our families do? What did God command? God commanded. God did not command each family to bring the blood of the Lamb and put it on ourselves. And Deuteronomy that we must love, it said we must love the Lord with all our heart and that we must engrave the word that is proclaimed in our hearts and in verse 7 it says we must teach our children as we are at home or on the street or when we are laying down or standing up and that we must teach this word Beloved saints of Pyongyang, 
Do we listen to this word and obey just as it told us? When we think about this, we must think deeply again and again. This word teaches us how we can love God. The method of loving God is to engrave the word in our hearts and teach it to our children. And it, it tells us an action that we must do that is symbolic of these hearts. In Deuteronomy 6, verse 8, it says you will also put it and bind the word to your hands. And verse 9 says you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Them here is the word. This is what God told the Israelites to do after they settled in Canaan in their families. And you can say, Pastor, but that is then and now is now. But is the word back then and the word now different? What this means is the method in which we must love God is first we must engrave the word in our hearts. We must not let it pass through one year out the other, but we have to engrave the word in our hearts. And what does this mean symbolically? What are the actions that we must do symbolically? First, bind the word to your hands. Hands represent actions. And we had bracelets on our wrists. For do you remember? And what happened? You can come in, right? Second, place the word on your forehead. This is where this symbolizes your thoughts and your ideology. To engrave the word in your hearts means that our thoughts and our actions must be according to the word. What happens when our actions and the word is different? We see the reality of it today. We're looking at it right now. This is because the word was not engraved in the hearts. Beloved saints of Pyongyang, we must engrave the word in our hearts. We must engrave it with a fiery heart so that on, we can protect it until the day that God comes and we can make him glad. Small point number two, what does it mean to pass on the word to our descendants with symbolic actions? They were told to write the word and place it and paste it. It had the blood of the lamb. And it means put it there so you can see it whenever you go in and out. The Jews have a small box on their doorpost. And I was curious, so I looked it up. And you can open it, and when you open it, there is a small little scroll that represents the word of God. Deuter and it's based on Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 and 9. And the Jews literally have the word on their doorposts. Are there saints who have the word on our doorpost? There is a pastor that I know, and he always had it. And it's Reverend Che. To engrave the word in our hearts is to put it on our hands and our forehead and to pass on the word to our descendants is to put the word on our doorposts. And the doorposts represent all the people of the family.
and we must have the word on our doorpost so that when we go in and when we go out, it's a life of the word, and we can understand the word and act according to the word with our actions. And may the living, God, living word guide us in our lives. To have the word on the doorpost means to pass on the word to, in, to the, all the people inside the house. And God told the people to keep the Passover at the tabernacle and put the word on the doorposts. And there are many things we can learn through this. Why does the blood forgive sins? In Leviticus 17, verse 1, It says, the blood has life, and life, and the blood forgives. And it says clearly that the blood has life. And in the New Testament, where did Jesus say he placed his life? In John 6, verse 63, It says, the spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. The word is life. Therefore, Jesus' life is in the word, and we must remember this. And until the day we go to heaven, we must protect the word. The blood that was shed on the cross is precious blood because Jesus' blood contained the word and the eternal life of Jesus was contained in the word. That is why it's the precious blood. There is life in the blood and we must remember this. In the blood of Jesus, there is the word and the word forgives our sins and it saves us and it protects us and the word protects the church and our businesses and our workplaces and all the aspects of our lives. And it is happening today. The only, the, we always say only Jesus and we pray and we hold hands together and we walk together. And I believe we will all do this together. During the Exodus, they were commanded to put the blood on their doorpost. And in Canaan, they were put the word on their doorpost. And this also has to do with blood. The person who receives the word first is the doorpost of the family. The person who received the word first is the representative of the family. And what responsibilities do they have? They have the responsibility to engrave the word in the families. You must not think it doesn't matter whether they listen or not. You have a husband, and you just abandon him and come out during early in the morning on Lord's Day and go back late at night, and you're not curious to see if he's alive or not. You shouldn't do that. You must not give up until the end and keep praying and praying. And until he listens to the word, God does not give up on us. And may we, I believe we must pray until the end and there will be life. May all the saints of Pyongyang and all the families, may the word be engraved that we may all become doorposts, that God protects us and works through us, that there will be a work of God where He, pro where he saves us. And I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Redemptive historically, Jesus Christ is our door. In our families, we have the phrase, only Jesus. In John 10, verse 9, 
It says, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. How beautiful is this word, and it gives us happiness and joy. When we obey this word, I believe it will happen. When you are within the door, you will be received, and you will, you will be saved, and you will be protected. Just as they put, door, put the blood on the door, Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross, and he saved you and I from sin and death, and he protects us. If so, what must we do in the door, within the door? First Passover, what did God command that they do? God told them to eat the lamb. They were to eat the lamb all inside the house. And this is in Exodus 12, verse 11. In the New Testament, it says, you must eat the flesh of the Son of Man. And this is in John 6, verse 53. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. It tells us that we must eat the flesh and blood of the Son of Man, of Jesus Christ. And many people did not understand, so they went away. And this is recorded in the Bible. In the last times, what does it tell us that we must eat? We must eat the open book. We must take the small open book. And I believe that this blessing has been given to us. Then what must we do? We must do according to this word. We must act according to his word. Just because we keep it, it doesn't end there. We must do it with our actions. We must pray to God and receive wisdom and go before God with fervent hearts. God told us to eat the word, and Apostle John ate it, and the Bible records this. In the Old Testament, it says, eat the lamb, and the New Testament says, eat Jesus, and in the end times, it tells us to eat the book of the word, which is the word itself. If the blood of Jesus Christ is on the door, then the saints inside the door must eat the word, so do not give up. Do not worry. Do not be concerned. The work of the Father will truly take place, and we believe so, and it will happen. In the ancient East, when we look at the traditions, to go past the doorpost is a great event. They did not allow anyone to come in. And it's the same for us today. We don't open the door and let anyone come in. At the time, there were many enemies, and they were very careful. To go past the doorpost means that the people who pass it are close people or the friends or families, and those are the people who are allowed past their doorposts. And what's even more important is eating in the, fam in the house together means they are one family. And it means they became a family in a covenant. God and the Israelites when we look at the process, how they establish the covenant, it has this exact same thing. Exodus 24, verse 8. So Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. They were establishing a covenant. 
Exodus 24, verse 11, Yet he did not stretch out his hand against the nobles of the son of Israel, and they saw God, and they ate and drank. They saw God, and they ate and drank. When you look at God, you die. But the covenantal people, they saw God, and they ate and drank. How amazing is this word? They had the covenantal meal with God. And this means that you are my family now. We believe that our saints are fa a family with God, that we are in God's family. That's why God is our Father. He is our Father. We are His children, and that is why we pray to God, and God listens to our prayers, and He gives us an answer. We must believe this. We have to believe this. If the answer is late, don't be worried. If you pray without ceasing, then God will certainly answer. And that is faith, isn't it? That is the power that we have. Luke 22, verses 19 to 20. And when he had taken some bread and given things, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. God will give us everything. This meal is the new covenantal meal. So today, we are in God's family. And this is in Ephesians 2, verse 19. And that's why it tells us we are, we are in God's household. That means we are in His family. So to, to pass through the doorpost is that important. May the saints of Pyongyang go past this doorpost. And may we be together until that day and encourage each other hand in hand and encourage each other and mediate for each other and be united in one in heart and in will. And I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Big point number two, the threshold of Ezekiel's temple is the place where God's glory left but will return. Ezekiel 10 verse 4 says, Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub to the threshold of the temple, and the temple was filled with the cloud, and the court was filled with the brightness of the glory of the Lord. The glory of the, the glory of the Lord was in the threshold of the temple, and the glory of the Lord filled it. The glory of the Lord could not have was not able to be there. And the glory of the Lord left. And it was on the cherub. It left the threshold of the temple, and it means the glory of the Lord left the temple. But we can see the glory of the Lord return to Ezekiel's temple, and he and the glory of the Lord passed through the east gate and passed the threshold of the temple. Jesus Christ is the glory of God. And this is in John 1, verse 14. Through Jesus, the glory of God will return to this earth. 
and we believe it will come to our church and in our families. Jesus is the doorpost and the threshold. Furthermore, the church, which is the body of Jesus Christ, who have been nailed on the cross together and have been resurrected, and we must become the doorpost or the threshold of this day and age. And with the word of redemptive history, we must take on this role and have this responsibility. Through the church, the glory of the Lord will return to this earth. And through the church, the glory of the Lord will appear to this world. In Romans 6, verse 4, it says we have been buried with them through baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father so we too might walk in newness of life through the glory of the Father Jesus was resurrected and we take part and if our church take part in the resurrection, then we believe that he will allow us to live. Romans 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And there are times in our lives of faith where we go through hard times. And we want to just lay down everything and just give up. What, why did this happen to our church? How long will this last? Sometimes we worry and we cannot, and we lose sleep over this. And there are times we cannot eat with worry but we must remember this word. It gives life to our mortal bodies, our bodies and our families and our church. We believe that God will give life. The Spirit of God raised Jesus from the dead, and the Spirit of God will also give life to our mortal bodies. And that's why in the last times, the church that has the glory of God will be the church that reveals the glory of God. And I, and I pray this upon you in the name of the Lord. Big number three, the water of life flows from the threshold of Ezekiel's temple. We've heard this so many times, and we receive much grace. What's important is that we must believe in Ezekiel 47, verse 1, today's main scripture text, it says water was flowing from under the threshold of the house. This is the starting point of the water. And the water of life will flow down, flow out from the New Jerusalem, and it comes from the throne of God and the Lamb. And we believe that the church should be the spiritual threshold of Ezekiel's temple. And God has given us this word at the last times. And he gave, and the Bible says that individuals will have the water of life flowing from within them. Saints who believe in Jesus and glorify him, the water of life will flow from their stomachs. The glory, when Jesus receives his glory, then the saints who give him that glory, we believe that water of life will flow from their bodies. So wherever you go, darkness will turn to light. 
and you will act as light and salt. Wherever you step on, it will be a, it will be a place of grace. And wherever you enter with a praying heart, God will work through you and be with you. And we believe this. The church, when it's the center of the word and the blessings, and we must be and take on the role of the doorposts. And we must dedicate ourselves to the church and keep it clean. And when we do that, the water of life will flow from the church and revive the lives of the world that are dying. Through our founding pastor, we received so many words and so many word of God, and he taught us so many things and urged us to keep them, and we must keep them and act upon them. May Pyeonggangjae Church give glory to God and may glory of God be with us and the word of life come and flow through our church and that wherever it reaches, there will be new life and we must all be there. In conclusion, the families of the saints who fully receive the word of God will receive the blessing of coming in and going out. If there is a saint who fully receives the word of God, that saint who has the word inscribed in their hearts will be the doorpost and the threshold of the family, and the family will, see, will receive the blessing of coming in and going out. That family has the covenant and has the word of God, and the family that has the covenant of God is the household of God. We are a family. God allowed us to be His children and guides us and always leads us, and we must believe this. And therefore, when we go in and go out, God will always protect us, protect us and be with us. And may we always walk with God and believe that we are always walking with God. We must engrave the word in our hearts. Wherever the word is, we must be there. We must seek after God and pray that God will allow us to understand the word. And when we become the spiritual doorposts and thresholds, our families will be blessed through us and will receive salvation and become spiritual families of God. And our church and our families will be protected, and our nation will be protected. And I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Let's pray together. Father God, full of love and grace and mercy, we thank you. Today you have visited us with the word, and you have blessed us, and we sincerely thank you and give you all glory. May all the saints of our church engrave the word in their hearts. May they become spiritual doorposts and thresholds that all their families will be protected by you and that you will acknowledge them as your household, that whatever they do, wherever they go, there will be no lack and that there will be 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, and 1,000 and 10,000-fold and that we will all give able to give glory to you. May they become saints that receive the blessing of coming in and going out. And furthermore, please bless our church so that all darkness will be cast away. And please cleanse us. And as the church works for your will, may we take on the responsibility of the spiritual doorpost and threshold, and may we not only shine your glory, but become the path of your blessing so that many souls will come. The word of life that comes from the pulpit 
may it give life to the souls in darkness of the world. And may all the families and relatives please heal all of them and allow them to return. And we especially pray for the issues we have in our families and workplaces and businesses. May we all lay them down and entrust them to you. And may there be a work where it is all solved. We pray especially for the saints who are ill. Please go visit them and heal them so that they will be healed and give glory to you and that they will be able to evangelize many people. We entrust the rest of this worship to you and pray in the name of Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's give glory to God.